look at the markets a little bit differently than most traders. I utilize price and price action. I stay away from all of these indicators here, all these indicators that you see here. I try to stay away from all of them. Stochastics, MACD, uh, volume, uh, moving averages again. I, I just don't use any, any of that. So I'm going to close this out here and I'm going to today hopefully uh, give you something that you're able to take away from an understanding on how these yo-yo bars that I'm referring to work, what they're all about, also give you a little bit of insight on some of the tools that price gives to us that is able to show us a way to trade without following any type of uh, conventional indicator. Okay, So what I have here in my chart, I'm not going to do a PowerPoint presentation. I decided to just concentrate on charts. Today's chart, yesterday's, um, I'll bring up different markets if you'd like. My main market is the E-mini S&P. So what I have showing on my chart, and by the way, let me just thank Ninja Trader as well for um, sponsoring this event. Those of you, before I begin, those of you who know me know that I really like to use Ninja Trader. It's my charting platform of choice. I have hundreds of videos. I use Ninja Trader to trade. I think it's very easy to use, especially if you're a beginner trader. For those of you who are an advanced trader, you probably have had other charting platforms and are probably now looking at a more simplified way to trade. So definitely, if you're not using NinjaTrader, I, I highly recommend it. And you can download it for free uh, as a demo off of my website, daytradetowin.com. Okay, so, very good. Okay, so the first thing uh, that I'm going to show you today is what happened today on the Atlas line. Okay, what you see here is the Atlas line for December 11th, uh, the EME and the S&P, and I am going to show you what yo-yo bars are all about, but I want to give you a, a, a different representation of what this tool can do for you. Okay, instead of looking at an indicator that tells us when we should go long or short by having the indicator cross two moving averages or, ha or having the indicator uh, close above the zero line or do anything like that, which really uh, what we're waiting for is we're waiting for price to then tell the indicator what to do and the indicator then to tell us what to do. I say let's go right to the source. Let's look at price, these candles that are plotted on the chart, and let's see how they revolve and how they relate to the Atlas Line Indicator. So it's a little bit different thinking. We're waiting for price to do something instead of having the indicator do something. And it's an inverse relationship. So as an example, you see this double bar long here at 1427. There's a very specific reason why this occurred. It's not based off the Atlas Line. The Atlas Line is this right here. It's not based off of the of off of the Atlas Line. Here's the Atlas Line. It's based off of price. Okay, so here I have the Atlas Line to begin plotting at when the E-mini market opens at 9:30 Eastern Standard, and I want to only see trade double closes. Right, that's only the only trades I want to see, as well as pullback and strength trades. And I can have an alert file, and I'm using the average true range, the ATR, as a filter. That's it. There's no parameter. So let's look at how price revolves around the Atlas line to tell us what to do. This double bar long today at 1427 occurred very simply because two consecutive closes, we have here one, we have here two, plotted above the Atlas line. So what we're doing is we're looking at price, how it revolves around the Atlas line instead of telling us, unless, un instead of having the Atlas line cross or moving averages or anything like that, then tell us what to do. So it's really, what we're really doing is following the price. The same thing with the short here. The short is two consecutive bars 
that close below the atlas line. They don't have to be uh, two red bars. They don't have to be two green bars. They don't have to be one red, one green. All they have to be are two consecutive closes, either above or below. Very simple. Pr uh, trading should be simple. Trading does not have to be complicated. And so whenever I see two consecutive closes above or below, I have an entry. Now how you manage it is a little bit uh, different. And remember, what I'm only thing I'm showing you right now are the main trades, the double bar long and double bar short trades. Those are the main trades. They set off the move. They set off the trend. Um, they happen in real time. And by the way, if anyone has any questions, feel free to um, put your questions there in the chat box. I'll be looking at the questions throughout. You do not have to wait until the end of the presentation for me to answer any questions that you may have. So we have a double bar long at 1427. Fantastic. Entering is only half the battle. We must know how to manage this trade, not just stops, but also profits. So now here comes the management part of price action and looking at what the price is doing to manage the trade. I do things a little bit differently. First of all, let's talk about a profit target. A lot of traders that I talk to, they want a very specific profit target, whether it be one point or five points. And I say, let's be dynamic. Let us look at the current market conditions to tell us what to do. Some traders uh, just you know, go long and hope that it's going to get to their profit target. Well, I have on the bottom of the chart a tool called the ATR, the average true range. This is found in every single charting platform. And the ATR is found right here right here. Now I use a setting of 4 or 5 as you can see because I'm interested in the most current and recent market conditions to tell me what's happening. If the market's fast I need to know. If the market's slow I need to know. Therefore when I look at uh, what's happening with this order at 1427 which happens to look just like this I have an expectation Right. Let me just remove the bar timer here. I have an expectation that the market will move based on the current conditions. So the current condition is telling me a point and a quarter, point and a half. It's 1.45. I always round down, so let's say a point and a quarter. I know that if I enter into this trade at 14.27, the second close above the Atlas line, I can expect, these are expectations, that the market's going to move not four points, not five points, not ten points. It could, but my expectation is that it's going to move a point and a quarter. So from this point on, 1427, up a point and a half, point and a quarter, I can expect that. All right? Now, in knowing this, I am already ahead of the game because this is where the market almost always trades to. So I have a good indication of what the current uh, projection is for a profit target. If that ATR, if the market was more volatile, happened to be two points, I can expect eight ticks. If it was three points, I can expect 12 ticks. But what I can't do is expect more than what that value is. And sometimes I'm shortchanging myself if I just want two or three ticks, I'm able to take more out of the market. All right. Um, okay, question here, uh, Alvarez. Is this like a point and figure use of 45 degree trend lines? It's not. Has nothing to do with point and figure, and it's not a um, a 45 degree angle. I can show you back in history. The angle is different. All right, Alvarez. Uh, Joy, is this for equity trades too? Yes, this is for um, equity or currencies or forex or currencies pairs as long as you have 24 hour data because the atlas line needs 24 hour data. Uh, so you see, how do you draw the atlas line? The atlas line is not it's not linked to any uh, conventional indicator so it's drawn it's actually a very complicated formula based on just price and it looks back where price has been and 
calculates a tangent and cotangent and a sine to create the angle and to create where it plots, either um, above or below. Susie. Uh, Joe, uh, the atlas line is a proprietary indicator. I found it day trade to win and I created the atlas line for more of a um, a professional trader instead of uh, the retail trader. And so the theory behind the Atlas line is to be long or stay long or take long trades as long as price is above the Atlas line. If price is below the Atlas line, then again, I want to be long, I want to take long, uh, I'm sorry, I want to take short trades, I want to go short, so the bias is short. But we have to put rules to it. It's not just go short if we're below or long if we're above. Um, there has to be some type of objective rule base to allow us to go long or short. So um, I'm looking at the Atlas line, but then I'm using price to tell me whether or not it's, um, it's okay to go long or okay to go short. So we're going to use price in conjunction with the Atlas line. Uh, Joe. Uh, Dennis says, it looks like you had more bars previous to your entry closing above the Atlas line. It looks like you had more bars previous to the Atlas Yeah, but the Atlas line started the plot right here. So I have to calculate two consecutive closes from the start of the Atlas line. So the Atlas line started plotting here. This is when we calculate the, uh, the two consecutive closes above or below. Uh, Dennis. The dashed line, Ken, is the Atlas line, right? All right, very good. Uh, let me see, any other questions? No, all right. So two consecutive closes above once the Atlas line begins to plot as an entry. The same thing with two consecutive closes below, which is right here. Remember, the entry, it's no secret, is the close of the second bar. So this is bar number two. Two consecutive closes, bar number two, bar number one. And here we are at the entry 1427.50, which com coincides with that. And again, once this occurs, I look straight down at the ATR and I say, what are the current conditions? What can I expect out of the market? Long, short, short is the answer. 10 points, 5 points, really the market's kind of slow. I can expect one point out of the move. It went definitely much more than that, and that's when you can trail a stop, and you can do all this other stuff, but the immediate expectation is that I can expect one point out of the trade. All right. Now, in looking at the entries, we also have to manage the trade. That's very important. I know my profit. I know the direction. What, what about stops? You know, stops are something traders look at and they love them and they hate them. They hate them because they have to put stops in in order to protect your trade. And you got to have, you got to have a stop. Um, you got to allow a stop to be hit, right? You just can't let the market go and go against you. So it's a love-hate relationship. So I think of stops a little bit differently. We need to be dynamic with stops. Most traders have a very fixed value type of stop. There are four stops in total that I use and that I teach. The four stops have to be combined. And whichever hits first, that's the stop I take. So as an example, if you are going to enter long here in the beginning of the day or short in the beginning of the day. There has to be something that tells you I am not going to make money on this trade. This trade is going to be a loser. Most of the time you have a fixed stop. One point, two points, three points, five points, whatever. Okay, that's fine. But let's be dynamic with these stops. The four stops that I teach are a time-based stop, a pivotal stop, a prove-it stop, and a catastrophic stop. Those four stops are used 
because we have to uh, be completely covered in case there's proof that the market's not going in our direction, I'm out of the trade. If the trade takes forever to, to make that profit target, I'm out of the trade. That's a time-based stop. I have to have a catastrophic stop in case right away the market goes against me. Something happened in the world, an earthquake or a terrorist attack or some sort, and the market goes chaotic against me, I have to have a catastrophic stop. Uh, so let's see here, prove it stop, pivotal stop, some type of pivot when the market's uh, pivoting against me, some type of proof, a time-based stop, and a catastrophic stop. So these four stops, whichever gets hit first, I'm out of the trade. So what do I know about these trades that I'm about to take? Well, I know the exact entry. I know the exact stop, whichever of the stops gets hit first. I know the exact profit target, and I know the direction that I want the market to go in. I have everything covered. The only fallback is whether we use market orders or whether we use limit orders. And obviously if you're going to use a market order, you're going to lose a tick on the trade. It's just normal. If you use a limit order, I love limit orders. Unfortunately, sometimes the market is so fast it runs away from me and I can't get the price that I want. It happens and I don't chase it. So I prefer limit orders. Um, you can use market orders. This is how I manage my trades with the, using the Atlas line. Some questions here. Um, uh, what are the S&P letters on the chart? What do they mean? The S&P letters stand for strength and pullback trades. Because once you take this 1427 uh, long and you take the point and a quarter, point and a half, now what? Right? You're out at a point and a quarter. And now you're saying to yourself, okay, there's, the market's running away. It's going higher. Why can't I go long again? Yes, you can go long. Pullback trades are indicated by P's, telling you that there's a pullback happening to enter long. Strength trades occur uh, when the market's showing you strength, and they're plotted for you. Here's another pullback here. Here's another pullback to go long. Actually, this trade didn't work out. And here's a strength trade here that was a break-even trade and there's no strength or pullback trades here. So the strength in these pullback trades occur in addition to the uh, double bar long and double bar short trades. Okay, for those of you who asked that question. Uh, Dennis, does this work on Renko or range charts or any time-based? Uh, it works on any time-based chart. One of my favorite happens to be 15-minute. Uh, 15-minute charts are actually my favorite. Again, nothing changes. This is a very objective um, 1429.50 and 1427.50. Um, so it's very objective as far as what the rules are. Nothing changes. So I like the 5 minute and I like the 15. I'm much more of a day trader when it comes to the 5 minute than I am waiting for 15 minutes. It's like an eternity. As far as tick charts, sure, it works on tick charts. I'm not a big um, range chart fan. I think that if you like range charts, just take a look at what's the range chart that you use. Um, who asked that question? Dennis. Let me know what, what you use with a range chart. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. And it also works on oil and gold. So Dennis, for example, let me change this to crude oil. I think we're changing, trading the January contract here. And crude. So this is crude right here. I think crude starts at um, 8 o'clock or 8.30. I think crude starts at 8.30, I believe. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. Uh, what time does crude start? I think it's 8.20 or 8.30, I believe it is. So here is the you have to put the market open parameter. When does crude oil start? Eastern Standard Time. I believe it's 8.30. So this is what it looks like on the crude oil. Uh, 9 o'clock, I'm sorry. All right, so 9 o'clock. Okay. So this is crude oil. And gold, let's see what gold looks like. Gold is, I think, 
still in December, maybe January. Let's see what gold looks like. Yeah, we're in January. I'll bring up a gold chart uh, with January in a little bit. I just have to add it. Uh, natural gas, NG, Denton. Uh, it does work in natural gas. I think natural gas opens also at 9, just like the crude. I don't think I have an NG here. NG, I do have an NG. So natural gas. At um, 9 o'clock. All right, that's good. 9 o'clock. So that's natural gas. So the rules are the same. Two consecutive closes above or below. All right. So let me get back to the E-mini S&P. And let me change that back to 9.30. All right. So the Atlas line is a little bit of a tool. It's versatile. You still have to manage the trades after you enter with stops and the profit targets based off the ATR. And the results are shown on the Day Trade to Win website under results. Okay. A 20 for gold. Okay. All right, let me add gold here. And gold GC. February. Okay. Okay. So let's take a look at what gold looks like at 820. And by the way, uh, tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, but Thursday is rollover for the CME. Okay, so that's gold. Okay. For Dennis. Okay, Dennis. 820. Market open. That's gold. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, you know, I don't have any any uh Ranko charts. I've never put Ranko charts on the Atlas line, so I can't tell you or recommend it on a Ranko Charts poll. Okay. All right, so let's get back to uh, the mini S&P. Let me change that back to 930. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about what yo-yo bars are and you know how you can utilize them to trade give you a definition of a little bit of what I teach in the mentorship program about how to look at price. When the market moves like this, it goes up and something happens when the market starts to feel some pressure from the sellers. The market comes down and what you're left with is a wick. Right, and the same thing happens. And I, the reason why I call this a yo-yo bar, you got it, then, Dennis. Uh, the reason why this this happens to the downside, it's like a yo-yo comes down, comes back up, and what you're left with is a because there's buyers, you're left with a wick. Okay. All right, so. This is a yo-yo bar, where price tries to go down, but gets souped right back up. And there are a there there are a a lot of um, traders that look at this and don't know quite what to do with it. So what these yo-yo bars tell me, as a trader, it tells me that there's an opportunity here. It could be an opportunity to exit the trade, opportunity to enter in the trade. There's a, a lot you can do with this. But most importantly, we have to isolate what these yo-yo bars are. 
uh, Ja says here, are you going short after the second down bar below the outs line? Right, so the entry, Ja, is the second consecutive closing price above or below to answer your question. So we have one closing price, we have two closing price, the closing is uh, the entry, 1427.50. Okay. So what a yo-yo bar tells me is that something's happening, something's changing, something internally is is changing. Let's just put it that way. Okay. So let's say that you are in a trade that you went short. Let's say you went short here. And your profit target is here. Okay. You went short here and your profit target is here. It could be the profit target based off the ATR. And so as the market starts moving, it does this. Okay. Now, as a trader, I look at this and I am not going to wait. I'm not going to wait for price to give me a fifth chance or a sixth chance or a seventh chance. For me, I understand what's happening. I understand that it's either hitting some type of resistance or support. Uh, something is happening that is stopping this market from continuing lower. Okay. Now, if I'm short here and price touches my profit target and I don't get filled, the first time, it's not a big deal. The second time, the third time, maybe it never reaches it. The fourth time is here. I am not going to lose money on this trade, right? I am going to look at this and say to myself, I'm exiting the trade. So what these yo-yo bars are telling me that while we've identified a trend to the downside, this is trying and trying a second time and trying a third time and trying a fourth time, but it cannot continue lower. This should be a clue for everyone. It's a forward-thinking way to look at price to say um, we're trying to continue in this uptrend or trying to continue down in this downtrend and it's not happening. So if you're in a trade, you look to exit. If you're in a tr if you're not in a trade, this can definitely present an opportunity because what this is telling me is that it's hitting some type of support or maybe hitting some type of resistance if it's the opposite. Uh, you're welcome. And you know, it leads me to believe that leads me to believe that the market's going to change. Now, we can see these yo-yo bars everywhere, right? You see it here. You see it here. You see it. Mm, let me take a look here. You see it here. But the goal is not to look at just one of these yo-yo bars. Remember, yo-yo bar is a candle that tries to go higher or lower, but cannot. So, for example, let's take a look at this double bar short here. This was yesterday, as a matter of fact, on the Atlas line. We have one, two consecutive bars that are closing below the Atlas line. So the second line had to be a doji, 1418. I'm going short, right? 1418. But look at what's happening prior to that. Market's going up and up and up and up and up. And then you have it yo-yoing, yo -yoing, which is trying to go higher and getting pushed back down. One candle, it's not really enough to tell me much. But look at what we have. We have one, we have two, we have three, four, five. It's trying but failing. So on this 1418 short, to go short, what do I know when I use the atlas line? I look down, I can make a point and three quarters, seven ticks out of the trade. Seven ticks is 1418 
minus 7 ticks is 14, 16 quarter, right? 14, 18, 14, 17, 14, 16 quarter is right here. This is my expectation. So now, when I look at the ATR, this is getting smaller, one and a half, one and a half points. So my profit target will change from starting out at one and three quarters, seven ticks, to dropping down to six ticks because we're being dynamic and so my profit target is here. Now, if you're short here at 14.18 and it tries to go and misses your profit target, that's once. It tries a second time and misses your profit target, second time. Tries a third time, misses your profit target. Tries a fourth time, misses your profit target. Tries a fifth time. This is something that as a trader you should understand and you should say, okay, I have a definite uh, target. It's almost making it, but it's just missing it. What do I do? I get out of the trade, maybe a tick or two, as it tries a third, fourth, or fifth time. This is how I look at yo-yo bars when I enter into a market, when it's failing to get to my profit target. Now remember, this is 20, 25 minutes, so we're not looking at one minute bars here. We're looking at a total span of 20 minutes or 30 minutes here. It's a lot of time, and it could definitely uh, make or break a trade. Let me show you another example. This is the Atlas line on 12.7, Friday. Just passed. So here is the Atlas line. Tells me to go short, right? Goes up a little bit, starts coming back down. I have a very specific time-based stop or prove-it stop. It didn't hit the prove-it stop or the pivotal stop. But if you see that your profit target from at 14, 14 quarter, if it's not being hit, Let's say that your profit target is all the way down here, and it tries here, it tries here, it tries here, and it's not continuing lower, as, as if the trend is starting to fail. And remember, it's not just by one bar. You have to use multiple candles, typically four or five bars, three, four or five bars, telling you, I'm trying to go lower, I can't do it. This is an opportunity for you to exit the trade. Here's another example with the Atlas line. Here's a 1408.75 long. And here's another one. Here, this is December 5th to go short, to go long. Dennis, I don't know if for trials on the Atlas line because there's training that's involved with this. You have to understand it's not just following software. I want you to understand how these orders work, how to manage them right. So included with with purchase, everyone gets a live training. It's about an hour and a half to understand how to use the Atlas line, which markets to trade it on, the time frames. So I don't offer free trials for that reason because you have to understand how this all works and how it's calculated. Now I touched a little bit on the ATR here at the bottom of the chart, right? So the average true range is very important. One of the things that I use with the ATR is I never trade when price is less than one point or four ticks or higher than five points. Now this is very important because I don't trade overnight, but the Globex session pre-market overnight, it can get very slow. It's not worth trading when the market is below one point. I'm not going to trade for two ticks or one tick or, or three ticks. It's not worth it. Some of you may think it's worth it. And that's fine. But on a five-minute chart, if in five minutes, if you can't make um, in a span of half an hour up one point or more, then it's really slow. So whichever market that you look at, it doesn't matter if um, it's the E-mini or if it's the Euro or if it's the 
uh, crude oil or the gold, anything less than four ticks is considered slow. And so I use the ATR to tell me if it's worth trading or not. And so these extremes have to be uh, very, very careful, very, very carefully understood. Okay. The current class that just started today, I have a mentorship class, a group class that started today. Uh, we have a, a mix of traders, beginner traders, and we have a, um, a, some experienced traders. It's interesting to see how uh, a traders evolve. When you're a beginner, you, you, everything that I hear is, look at all the wealth of indicators that are available here, right? Something has to be uh, of value, right? So these are the newer traders. This is what they look at, right? How to mix and match and how to make this all fit together. Then you have the experienced traders that have been around the block, have kind of tried a few things out, know that this whole optimization is a problem because unless uh, you optimize something in the past to make it look good, it'll never work into the future, right? So they've been around the block and they know that optimization of indicators and systems and things, they don't work. So you have to rely just on the price. So it's really a, a complete circle where you start off looking at indicators and then you round out going to um, back to the price itself. But you have to know how to manage the price. Now I can show you chart after chart after chart of the Atlas line or of the power price action or of the at the open for example. So here is the, just take this off here, and I'll show you the at the open method. This is the at the open method. It's software that's included with the at the open it tells you exactly where to go long. Sometimes you have this chase the trade, other times you have the original at the open. I've been using the at the open method for years, over 10, 15 years and it's still something that I use today. Now, if it stands the test of time that long, then you know it's not based off any conventional indicator. It's based off of the price. It's all it is is price action. So that's the at the open for today. Here is the at the open for at the open method for uh, yesterday, where you have a limit order both 14.18.75 and the stop would limit at 14.21. Price tags me at 14.18.75. I'm long. I make my money. Here is one and a one point is what I can expect. 14.19.75. I'm in. I'm out, and I'm done. So you, when you look at everything look at just the price. If you want to see what um, trading data I had today, let me show you. This is my dome and this is my count. Trading the Atlas line at the open blueprint trade, roadmap trade, it can be done, so I want you to look at the possibilities of um, possibly looking at the Atlas line. The mentorship program that started today, you can still get in, but I have a new class starting in January, or if you want to go one-on-one -on -one private with me, let me know, call me, I'll explain to you exactly how it works. Anyone have any questions? I had four trades today. I had the at the open here to go long, fourteen twenty nine fifty. I had the Atlas line long as well as the Atlas line short. And I also had a roadmap trade 
to go long down here. So there's a, a method I teach is called the roadmap to go long right here. And by the way, you know what this is? This is a yo-yo bar. Came down, came right back up. It's a yo-yo bar, just like just like I um, showed you earlier, where price goes down, it fails, starts to come up, you hit it. And I teach that in the mentorship program, what the roadmap is all about. Two contracts, I think, was the last uh, job, was the last um, order I did was this one here, was two contracts. The other one I usually trade between 5 and 10. The last one I took, because I don't like trading late in the day, usually my morning, the first two and a half hours. By the way, the at the open is just the, only works for within the first two and a half hours. The Atlas line results are only the first two and a half hours of the trading day. So when it comes into the afternoon, I don't like to, um, I don't like to push it really, because at that time I'm doing teaching, I'm doing other things. So I just went with two contracts here as the day ended. I, Personally, for me, this is kind of a, um, it's not really, I don't like to trade in the afternoon. I like to trade in the morning. So it's kind of more in a, I see an opportunity. I just happen to be here and I took it. All right. So here, here, uh, I'm sorry, here, 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 and here. So call me, email me. I have a number of resources on the blog on the FAQ if you're interested in learning how I do these price action methods the opportunity to join is now January 13 uh, 2013 is right around the corner I want everyone to be prepared to what's uh, around the corner unless the minds are right and the world's going to end in 10 days from now but I don't think so I think we're gonna have a great year in January, and I look forward to having you guys. No, the Atlas line can be used um, 24 hours a day, uh, Ja. For example, I have a lot of uh, Australian and German traders, and obviously for them it's a little bit difficult to trade. So I tell them to you uh, look at the London Open, and so here is the, the London Open. 3 o'clock Eastern Standard is when the London Open begins. I tell them, I know you guys need to sleep, so look at trading during the London Open. And there you have it there. That's the London Open. So you don't have to just utilize the Atlas line for the E-mini, the first two and a half hours. You can look at the London Open, uh, and you can also look at a late-day rally, late-day sell-off on the U.S. financials as well. All right, John? So you can plot it here. This is the London Open, and this is the 9.30 Eastern Standard. All right. Bruce? Sure. You got it, Bruce. <laughs> Maybe it resets, right? Could be. Uh, Bruce has a question here. He says, would you please use the ES to demonstrate how the ATR is used to determine um, your price range objective. Okay, Bruce. It doesn't matter um, which method you're using, at the open or the power price action or the roadmap or the scalping methods. I'm using the ATR with a setting of four or five. I happen to have here a setting of four. Okay, Bruce. And once I enter into the trade, okay, so let's take a look at, uh, remove the at the open, let's take a look at the Atlas line. Once I enter into the trade, which is the closing of the second bar, it's 1427, right? Okay? I'm long, period. Right there. Second close above. So far, you're, Bruce, you're good with me so far? Yes, Bruce? Okay. So, I look down directly down and I see what the average true range is of 
the last four or five bars. It happens to be 1.45. So if I round that down, 1.45 is the equivalent of one and a quarter points. So that is the equivalent of six ticks, uh, five ticks, five ticks. So I can expect from this entry, 1427, that the market will move up at least five ticks. So it's a direct correlation, one times the ATR. Bruce. Now, after I know what my profit target is, right? The question was, can you please use DES to determine how the ATR is used to determine the price range objective? After I know what the profit target is, I, I do have to manage the trade with one of the four stops. Whichever of the four stops occurs first, I will uh, take because if it takes too long, time-based stop. If there's proof, the prove it stop actually is a close in the opposite to, opposite side of the Atlas line. So if there's a, a closing price that occurs on the opposite side of the Atlas line here, then I'm out of the trade. The pivotal stop is based off of pivot. So whichever situation occurs for a stop, I'm prepared for it. But I know what my price objective is. All right, Bruce? Now, on the E-mini S&P, it's based off of points. But if you look at other markets, like the Euro or the crude or the gold, it's not based off of points. It's based off of cents or ticks. So you have to um, do a little bit of um, not a calculation, but for example, on a euro, I'll go to euro here, 6e. For the euro, you can see that this is at the time of this entry, 1.2995. If you look at the ATR, it was five ticks. But it's calculated a little bit differently. It's in it's 0 0.0005585. Okay, 585. How we work this is we move the decimal place over four ticks of uh, four places, which will equal to 5.85. Five ticks. So I can expect five ticks out of this trade. If I enter here. I can expect five ticks out of the trade. And it went right there. 95, 1300. And do you see where the market turned around? After it hit the five ticks, it came rushing right down. These are strength trades to go long. Right? You're long here, you're long here. The short, 1.2995, one, two, Exactly the same. I'm short. I look down. What is my opportunity? Four ticks, five ticks. There you go. Pullback trade. Pulls back. I'm short. There's my price. There's my target. A last question here I have. Dennis, do you ever use more than one atlas line during the trading day? Yes, you can. If you want to, you can add multiple atlas lines. Right? If you want to use the atlas line at uh, London Open, you can. You can definitely do that. There's a certain way that I like to do that. Um, here is the London Open. Okay. All right, everyone. Email me any questions you may have. I will try to post this webinar on uh, the videos page. You know, if you haven't done so already, there's lots of free videos on uh, day trade to win just check out the videos page there's also a free news indicator if you're using ninja trader you can have a free news indicator which will automatically update any news events international or u.s based uh, there's a karen time sync link there there's lots and lots of goodies there there's a very intensive blog so enjoy and i'll be in new york for a conference starting tomorrow have a great day. I'll hand it over to Kevin, and I look forward to your emails. Take care now.